Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And we're going to talk about the utter state of Marvel Comics and how Marvel Comics used to have standards. Oh yeah, used to. Uh, they used to have standards. And we're gonna do this as sort of a follow-up to a video we did the other day talking about just how god awful some of the artwork is in Marvel Comics. Mm -hmm. And it's not just bad art. I mean, you look at some of the ridiculous uh, ridiculous ideas that Marvel's yep. been coming up with that it does seem like they just don't care anymore. Uh, this is not a company that, that feels like it needs to sell a lot of comic books. No. Because uh, they're suckling off a of Mickey's teeth. But at least the art on that was kind of nice. I mean, the, the idea was stupid. Everybody hated it. I still don't understand why they thought that was a good idea. But the art was at least, you know... Competent? Competent. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, we'll talk about that. We're going to talk about Dan Slott, who is a, a notable Marvel Comics writer, uh, looking kind of buffoonish. You say, but a, is he now? <laughs> but is he now in a Disney Plus show? And we're going to talk about what it used to take to get a job at Marvel Comics and how hard it was to get a job at Marvel Comics. Before we get into it, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. Guys, we're over 150,000 subs. And uh, check out our new pins. We got a new yep. pre-order up for pins. If you go to shopclownfish.com, we've got uh, Geeky with a brush and me with a pencil. All right, so here we go. Uh, again, go out and watch the original video talking about the, the really bad Captain Marvel art. It's bad. My daughter, she was even like, what the heck? Well, what uh, what kicked this off? What kicked this off was actually a comment mm -hmm. that we got on this video. Right, which yeah. I thought was, you know, okay, whatever. And, uh, you know, this was a random comment and it shows how soft people have become that want to break into comics. Well, this just shows you the mindset of the people out there and why you're not allowed to, you're not allowed to correct anybody on anything ever, or you're just meanie pants. You're so mean. You're a meanie pants. And I want to talk about how brutal Marvel comics used to be because they were the best. It was very, very hard to get into Marvel comics. It was hard to get into DC comics. And as the industry began to decline, it actually for a while was harder because the jobs were harder to come by. People would work for years and mm -hmm. years and years to break into these companies. And now it seems like they'll just hand jobs out to anybody. Who yeah, literally. Or as long as you're a certain type of person. Right. So this comment was on our previous video. Uh, blocked out the name. Don't want anybody to get harassed. But it was like, what the hell? Uh, guys, it's 2020. More important thing in this moment. There are more important things in this moment. Plus, this is a human being you're insulting. God only knows what people are dealing with that resulted in this moment. <laughs> Okay. B what, the bad art? Like, uh, well, yeah, because well, they're dealing with a lot of shit in their lives and it's affecting their art and making their art suck. No, it's just called Marvel Comics doesn't have standards anymore. Yeah. Are you trying to push someone to suicide? Okay, this is kind of people who are, have been have been writing us and telling us, not this person in particular, but people like this person, constantly every time we have an opinion they don't like on cartoons, telling us that we should kill ourselves and die. But we should watch out what we say because we might drive someone to suicide. You know what? In the real world and in the professional world, until recently, you, you critiques were a thing. You needed to be of a certain, you know, a level to work at certain places. You can expect rejection. It's part of it's part of what goes along with it. You'll get more rejection in life than you ever will get, you know, you know, acceptance, and you know, and that's just the way life is. And it used to be that's what you expect. But this whole participation trophy mentality basically is you can just draw like shit, but because you're a special person and you might, you might have, you know, be sad and have depression and kill yourself, you should never have to have criticism. Critique. Critique helps you get better. Steel sharp and steel, people. You don't get better if everybody tells you you're fantastic and perfect. Like you see these people on, on um, America's Got Talent. My mom says I, I, I sing good. Yeah, and it's I know. Like, and then they're surprised when someone tells them they don't. And then you're like, how oh, that's so mean. Yeah, so this, I'm, I'm going to start pulling these up because this is uh, Todd McFarlane's pile of rejection letters back when he was trying to break into comics in the 1980s. And I remember when I was a kid, uh, I bought my Spawn number one. It came with a VHS tape. Remember those? Mm -hmm. VHS tape of Todd McFarlane speaking at, I think, Comic-Con. It's San Diego Comic-Con talking about breaking into comics and how he had piles and piles and piles of rejection letters. Years. It took him years to break into comics. And he would listen to the feedback he got. And then he would do... Now, back in the day when you were going to you know, try to break into Marvel or DC, you'd do your four to six sample pages. And you'd Xerox those off. And you'd mail them to a submissions editor. 
And that's, you know, and eventually they give you some critique. And if they thought you had some potential, you know, they would, uh, you know, ask you to come in or whatever. Um, now, I don't know if too many people that got hired through submissions. A lot of times they were just in the New York area and they got hired. But McFarlane was persistent. 300 and some, you know, uh, rejection letters. And uh, he said, you know, he would get and people tell him that he sucked. Um, this is Jim Lee. This is Jim Lee, who's a legend. He mm -hmm. is an artist, artist. He is a legend. Here are his, here are his rejection letters. You know, coming 1986. Thank you for your submission. Although DC Comics maintains an open door policy and reviews all serious proposals and or samples regardless of the source, I'm sorry to say your submission does not meet with current standards. Oh, because that's sorry. There were something called standards then. He is in charge of well, kind of. He's he's a big wig at DC Comics right now. Okay, Jim Lee is legendary. He is, he is like, people will look at Jim Lee's art and be like, you need to draw like this guy. This actually happened to me. I'm going to tell you my DC comics. Okay, I, I was going to say you need to. I have two stories. Okay, so when I was a teenager trying to break into comics, the first story was I went to Marvel Comics when I was 17 or 18. I got to meet with the submissions editor, you know, the guy who sends these letters out in person. And he was pretty brutal. Uh, he was. He's basically like, we got kids here in New York that are younger than you, that draw better than you. Uh, you're gonna have to up your game. You're okay, but you're not Marvel level, Marvel caliber. It didn't crush me. I didn't kill myself. I'm still here. What, what you did was you took that you know advice and you went and worked harder. Yes. You tried to improve because that's why you know these these things were set up in such a way that people had something to work to. If they really wanted to do something, you had to work for it. You don't just get you know, literally the art that we were seeing on there. I don't care if people get mad and made fun of it. I'm, I'm an art teacher, okay? It's my job to look at this stuff and say, here's what's wrong with it. How can you fix it? I had kids that, that were like middle school that drew better than that. And they wouldn't have been at a, a level of quality that, that a, a comic company, I would have thought, would have published it. I am sorry if you don't want to hear it. It was very jarring to see that because you're used to things that are so well done. And then you see that and they're like, was it for like a charity? Was it for like some kind of, you know... I don't even know what it was for. It was just like, I was, I, I couldn't wrap my head around seeing that as a professionally published book. Yeah. It, it just blew my mind because there are, and we had people in the comments, you know, besides uh, this person saying that they worked for years and years and years to try to break into comics. Eventually they gave up on it because they figured out they, you know, comics wasn't worth it at that point in time. Well, you had um, competition too, which, you're, that, which leads us into our second story. Right. So my second story was my DC Comics story. I got to go to DC Comics when, let's see, now at this point, I think I'm about 19 or 20. And um, I actually been sending them submissions. I think I sent them some Superman samples. And I was actually called up to DC. They called me up on the phone. Yeah, said, your cousin about crapped himself. Oh, yeah, he was because he was, he was really into comics at the point. And um, it was actually Mike Carlin. From DC, and this was about I want to say ninety nine ish, um, and I uh, I went to New York for a couple of days. I went up to DC Comics. I spent about three hours in his office, and uh, it was pretty cool. And he basically gave me the spiel. He said, "You're good. You're not DC good. You're okay. I can't give you any jobs right now because I don't think you could jump into it. If you lived in the New York area, maybe we could, you know, you could be an intern or something, um, whatever." And then he's he's basically like, "Look." Here's where the comic book industry actually is right now. And this was the late 90s. So the crash had already happened. Matt. Mm -hmm. He's like, we've got guys like Art Adams. Didn't he pull out pieces from that? He did. He pulled out uh, a Gorilla Grodd piece from Art Adams and laid it right, right in front of me. Beautiful piece. He said, Art Adams is having a hard time finding work. He said, do you think we have time to train guys like you to come in? You have to be able to draw better like, than Why did he else. call you in there? The thing is, he wouldn't have called you in if he didn't think you had potential. Yeah, I mean, I, I think he was, I, I, I didn't, but the thing is, I, I didn't walk away crushed. I didn't, I'm like, oh, okay, I get it. I think he was trying to politely tell me that the comic book industry was kind of in a, a shitty place right now. Uh, this might not be the best route to go. Now, it took me another three, four years. And eventually I got into doing, you know, cartoony or licensed comics, you know, uh, as a side job, I never, I didn't work in comics full time because the money at that point was not there mm -hmm. unless you were an Art Adams, even Art Adams and Neil Adams and all those guys are doing conventions to make, to make money. But again, it's like this, this goes with the territory, Jim Lee, you know, here's another, here's another one, 86. 
doesn't meet our standards. DC Comics. Here's Marvel. I had so many of these damn Marvel. Right. So do a lot of people. I had so many of these. But I, you know, you shouldn't have to, you should, everybody should just tell you you're great, even if you're not, because it'll hurt your feelings and you might commit suicide. Look, I'm just going to say it. People today need to grow a thicker skin and they need to get a pair of balls. And even if you're a woman, you still need a pair of balls. Because here's the thing. Life suck sometimes and you cannot grow unless you let you listen to people telling you you know look i'm telling you this isn't very good you can do better you need to do better we see it all the time with different industries it's part of the industry if you want to be a singer an actor an artist whatever this comes with it when i was in college you had to learn not only to give critique but to take critique because it happens you cannot improve if you don't see anything wrong with what you're putting out there and it seems like marvel just doesn't even give a fuck anymore sorry mom it's like they're just putting out whatever's cheap and it looks like garbage and they're taking a lot of crap for it now i do feel bad for this poor artist because i'm sure this poor artist feels really bad about themselves I have an anxiety d disorder. I take pills for it. I know people have depression and stuff like that. I don't think that people should walk on eggshells just to, you know, accommodate them because they might get upset. You know, they do. They, they might have the potential also to do amazing things if they worked harder. What's yeah. wrong with hard work? Why is it, you know, what, there's, what's wrong with working hard? I, it's, well, we'll talk about Dan Slott because apparently he has an aversion to working hard. Uh, we'll talk about him in a minute. But yeah, I love this. Resubmit. This is coming from Marvel. Re to Jim Lee. Resubmit your work when your work is consistent and when you have learned to draw yeah. hands. They gave him something. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? They yeah. gave him something to work towards and then said, okay, now work on this. Now work on this. And a lot of times if you're submitting a lot of times, they would know who you were. I yeah. mean, and so they're like, you know, okay, work on this part, work on that yeah. part. And they actually were trying. And I think the only time people they wasted this much time with, but work on your hands and resubmit, or people they honestly thought had a chance. I used to, back in high school, I would send Marvel packages about, I, I, and I had the rounds, I'd send Marvel and DC packages. Now, I will say Marvel got back to me more than DC did. Well, you found out where a lot of packages go, though. I did. That was my one kind of uh, crushing blow that I had. Again, when I went to Marvel Comics and I got to meet face to face with, uh, I think it was John Lewinsky, uh, was the submissions editor at the time. And he told me where most of the submissions go. He said, Yeah, we get them and they kind of go in the circular file. He said, You know, we used to send letters out to everybody. We don't do that anymore. And DC, Mike Carlin, he flat out, he had a whole stack of submissions on his desk. He's like, Look, what am I supposed to tell this person? He pulls it out and he's just showing it to me. He's like, They're really bad. You know, he said, really bad, but we can't send him a response. So, boof, into the garbage. Into the garbage it goes. I mean, that's that's it. You know, you're hired to make these companies money, and there are certain standards that they expect. Well, there used know. to be standards. There used to be. Now, apparently, there's no standards whatsoever. Um, Here's one to, uh, uh, yeah, here, coming from John Romita. Um, you know, you, you don't have, you don't meet our standards. You don't meet our standards. I hope I hope you find work someplace else because you're sta you're not up to snuff. You, you're not good enough for Marvel. Here's one just from a couple of years ago because Joe Casada was there. Um, you know, you don't meet our standards, and then we go from that to this. Yeah, but I mean, I just can't imagine. For all people will be mad about, well, you're making this person feel like killing themselves. Could you imagine? Being these people who worked for years to get into Marvel, right? And they practice and practice and practice. And they were leagues better than that art to begin with. And they got told, you aren't, you aren't up to our standards. You should try to do something else because you're not up to the standards. And then you open a Marvel book and that's what you see. You want to talk about wanting to kill yourself? I can't imagine how upsetting it is the people who legitimately were leagues better that still got told they weren't good enough for years to open and that's what they see. We had those people commenting on this video in addition to, to this comment. Uh, we had people that said, I worked my ass off for like five, six years trying to break into Marvel and DC, and then this is what they publish. Right. It's, it's, it's insulting. If you want to talk about being crushed, how about that? Because that's crushing. Now, I do understand this artist's work is being out there being mocked by everyone, but then again, that goes along with being published. When you put a video out there, when we put a video out there, we get mocked by people all the time. Oh, God, yeah. It goes along with it. If you can't handle that, then don't do it. I mean, it's as simple as that. I mean, for all these people like, well, this person might kill themselves. These are the same mentality of people who are yelling at us to kill ourselves because we don't like a cartoon or agree with them. So, you know, you're going to have to have balls either way. I had to learn really quick. I'm actually, people think about me being so mean. I'm actually not. I'm actually, Neon will tell you, a very sensitive person, very empathetic. Um, I'm actually you know, pretty kind I try to be. 
I had to learn to, to toughen up like right off. If I was going to do this, I had to learn not to be so take everything so personally. You told me that from the beginning. Yeah, and I felt bad because you know, and I worked, you know, I worked in media and I worked for uh, you know newspapers and I worked you know all over the place. So I was dealing with you know insults all the time. And I told Geeky, I said, you know, um, just you're going to get shit on. I mean, that's just the way it is. You just let it roll off your back. You're going to yeah. Have- the key is to not to let not to let it change you. Right. To keep your optimism. And the same with, you know, working with a lot of these companies too. I'm like, it doesn't matter what they say on the phone until the check clears. It's not a done deal. Right. And I learned you, that. And you said I was try, I was being real. And I remember at the time, you know, like I was being really negative. It's like, no, I'm not being negative. I'm trying to spare you from being heartbroken. Well, I got to tell you, I mean, I do, I have the two of us, I'm the optimist. You know, people are going to be like, I can't believe that. But is it true? Yeah, it's, it's true. true. I'm the optimistic one of the two of us. And you know, I wouldn't even have done comics if I hadn't been pushing for it. Like most wives aren't, but I was one of the ones, yes, do it. Yeah, actually, actually what happened was, I, you know, and it wasn't because of the feedback I got. It was because I looked at the industry. I'm like, the money's not there. <laughs> we, want to live, we actually want to live on, we actually, you know, more than dreams and wishes. Yeah, and it was at that point, the comic book industry. I mean, there you always had your top tier artists that were making decent money. But uh, just to break in, I knew what the page rates were, and I knew, and I'm like, I can't, not with a family, not with a house, mm-hmm. and um, you know, and I sent some samples in here and there, but it was just the point where it's like, I, you know, I got he was going to quit. I didn't let him, and then we did our own thing, which worked out well. But my point is, you have to learn that the, you, the rejection is part of it. You have to understand it's nothing personal. Um, and these people need to understand that, you know, you, you put it out there, it's going to meet, you know, it's going to be applaud, you know, applauded, and it's going to be criticized. It, 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 both things happen. You can't just only have the good, never have the bad. It just is not realistic. Um, but anyway, going on to the next thing, because we, we have to move a little faster because we have appointments this afternoon. So. Uh, yeah. So anyway, um, we'll talk about Dan Slott. Dan Slott, who is a, a pretty well-known Marvel writer. And I knew him because I knew him from Twitter. Yeah, that's it. Dan Slott is best known for Twitter. That's why I only knew about him because I have Twitter. That's the only reason I knew about him. Ruining Spider-Man and tweeting a lot. Uh, yeah. That is Dan Slott. So anyway, they put this thing out on Disney Plus and comics pros are pissed because it turns out that Dan Slott seems to spend most of his time on Twitter, not, not actually writing the books that he's getting paid a ridiculous amount of, of money to write. In fact, they talk about how they had to bring in uh, co-writers or ghost writers just to help him keep his deadlines because he spends most of his time just kind of wandering around the city aimlessly and you know pissing around on social media. Now, Dan Slott in recent years has come under fire for... Uh, you know, they call him that slots uh, block bots. He's the one who kind of started the whole block bot chain. If he spent as much time working on his job as he did on Twitter, trying to stir up shit and yell about things and get attention, he'd probably actually get his job done. But then I would put these poor, other poor people out of work that are there. My job is his deadline helper. My job is to write his actual stuff for him while he takes credit. That kind of stuff. You know, it, it, he wouldn't. They wouldn't have to be hiring these people. Uh, if he actually just did his damn job and shut his mouth on Twitter all the time. Yeah, this is very this is very true though. Like the letters and colorists, I don't think people realize how much shit they get because you know I colored comics for a mm-hmm. number of years, uh, and we get stuff last. Mm-hmm. And you're expected to pull off the impossible. You did all nighters before. They had I, you do yeah, a whole book yeah. once because it felt something fell like through. Like f- two or three days, I did a whole book. Yeah, yeah, and, because, yeah. and it was like you worked straight through like two days to get it done. And what happens is, I mean, arguably the story is what makes a, a book. Yes, but arguably a writer can put out several stories in a month where an artist it's going to take them probably a whole month just to do one because it takes a lot more time to do the art than it's going to take to do a book and i'm a writer saying this well yeah because i mean you can like with a marvel comic you can write down and be like okay i need a scene of like every spaceship ever introduced in the entire marvel comics and like every hero whatever and you bang that out in like 15 minutes and go draw it well then that artist is going to spend three days drawing that double page spread of all these spaceships right. and characters so when they're like not doing their damn job and they're not moving it on to the next person it puts more pressure on the next person and especially when it's an artist a colorist 
letter. And like you said, by the time it gets to the colors and letters, they have even less time oh, because yeah. of everybody else taking more time. So, you know, by him doing this, it's like, it's, 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 you know, causing issues for everybody that works around him as well. But, you know, he's himself and he's so special and his activism on Twitter matters so much more than actually getting the damn job done and it affects other people's jobs as well. Yeah, well, other other creatives are not, they try to play it off as a joke, like, oh, goofy old Dan Slot blowing his deadlines, whatever, and oh, you know, it's, why do we even keep him around? That's so Dan. That's so Dan, and uh, his peers are not happy. They're like, what the actual hell? What the actual hell? And he is one of the highest paid writers at Marvel, mm -hmm. and the whole thing is a joke. So again, it's like, you know, Marvel does not have the standards it used to have uh, at all. And, Clearly. <laughs> and uh, you know, it doesn't matter. I mean, back in the day, it was like you had to be this high to ride the ride. You had to be able to draw this well. You had to be able to you hit to your deadlines. Yeah, and back then, like if you blew a deadline consistently, you were off the book. Well, they even said they, 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 they would hire somebody who could draw, who wasn't as good as somebody else, as long as the person was good and could get it done in a timely fashion. It didn't matter if you were the best artist in the world. If it took you two weeks to draw one page, they were going to hire you over somebody who could do something that wasn't quite as good, but they could get it done in a timely fashion. Yeah. And that's, that's just it. But, you know, Dan Slott spends more time on Twitter mm -hmm. than he does doing his damn job. And he's getting paid how much per script. And that's why people are pissed because he is he is one of their top tier. Right? I mean, this is, wait, this is Marvel's best is what you're telling me. This is the mm -hmm. best Marvel's got right well, now. The guy at, who blows no, his at, deadlines. Right now. Because you have a guy who blows his deadlines. You have the brilliance behind, you know, Snowflake and Safe Space. And then you have the Captain Marvel art, which Captain Marvel having trouble as it is yeah. people are already mad about captain marvel the book keeps getting canceled all the time this does not help I, and I'm, it's nothing i'm sorry if the artist feels bad i am sorry artist that feels bad i don't know if you're a guy or girl or whatever i don't know who you are i'm just saying you know and it's, and it's marvel's kind of ultimately this person's getting harassed because they're the ones that actually published it mm. normally they would have been like you know i'm not putting your art in the book they had standards and you and, and standards suck and, it's, and you're like well, you're being mean i'm not being mean i'm being fair and reasonable and realistic standards are there for a reason if you, you would you want a car put out by somebody who their people they hired couldn't meet the standards and the certifications for their departments because you don't want to make them feel bad would you want to ride in a car done by that person no, we're seeing the Hollywood fall apart because they don't have standards. Yeah, I, I don't want to. I mean, it's a little bit different with like indie comics artists, but I don't want to ride. Right, indie comics is different. This is indie. That's different. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to ride around. I don't want to spend, you know, uh, thirty thousand dollars on a, a new an indie car that was put together in some guy's garage. Right. You know, and I don't know who the hell this guy was and it falls apart in the road. And but he, but it's okay because they had certain check boxes. Do they have the certifications? Well, no, but they met diversity requirements, you know, and it's like. And the thing is, what kills me, what kills me is there are people out there that meet those requirements that are far better. That was brought up. That was brought specifically by one of Dan Slott's detractors. Um, they said that there are uh, people who are POC who are, um, you know, here, uh, Alice Cott says there are five queer and bi POC writers with fresh ideas and stellar work ethic. Marvel could hire instead of empowering Dan Slott to consistently blow his deadlines and mistreat his creative teams, but it's almost as if the editor-in-chief who faked being a Japanese man for clout doesn't care. Ooh. Well, you know, that's what I'm saying. There are plenty of people out there. Now, in that case, the person's just trying to, you know. Bring that up They're again, just trying yeah. to move for, uh, you know, we just need to, we need to get rid of all the white men. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is if, if that's, these things like, you know, are part of your, you really want to push for that. There are people out there that are massively better um, that you could have hired at any given time. Just go out to webcomics people. You can find people that can tell, do panels, tell stories, and they're better than what Marvel had, even when Marvel was going at their heyday. Yeah. You know, there are people out there that are very talented, very gifted. They, they, they have, and, and in web comics, you, you have to meet deadlines. They already can prove it. They've already proved it. And they don't get a chance so that these people that are on, mostly on Twitter being activists, get another platform to, to be activists on. And then the money goes down the toilet and you make nothing. Yeah. Pretty much. So we're going to wrap this one up. Yep. Uh, there we go, guys. That is the utter state of Marvel Comics. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. And we'll talk to you later. Bye.